the Soviet armed forces contingents were not involved at all in the internal events of 27 December 1979. Fifth, these contingents will not stay in Afghanistan even for one day longer after the reasons for their call cease to exist. This is a callous violation of international law and the United Nations Charter. It is a deliberate effort of a powerful atheistic government to subjugate an independent Islamic people. On the 24th of December, 1979, the first divisions of the Soviet armed forces crossed the Amu Darwa River, invading Afghanistan. Landing at Kabul airport, elite airborne troops secured the capital. The Soviets simultaneously seized control of all strategic airfields and major towns in the country. Storming the presidential palace, KGB agents murdered Marxist President Amin, who had proved unable to subdue the Muslim resistance. Within three days of the invasion, the Soviets installed Barbak Kemal as the new head of state. Fervent Muslims had already declared jihad, holy war, against Afghanistan's two ruling communist parties, the Khaliqs and Peshamis. Jihad was now declared against the Soviet Union. Afghan guerrillas, known as Mujahideen, armed with simple and obsolete weapons, are fighting a modern and well-equipped force of 120,000 Soviet troops. The Russians are the most recent in a long line of invading armies. Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan and the British Empire have all attempted to conquer Afghanistan. But this is not a modern war. This is jihad a holy war fought with an ancient mentality. The Soviets controlled the main cities and highways. The Mujahideen have withdrawn to their strongholds in the mountains and the countryside. There is one exception, Kandahar, the former imperial capital and second largest city in present-day Afghanistan. The Mujahideen and the Soviets occupy different parts of the city. The Mujahideen control this district, known as Mahalajat. The Soviet and Afghan armies have posts dotted around the city and control the airport and military district. In Kandahar, 4,500 Mujahideen wage war against 11,000 Soviet and Afghan army troops. The Soviets could destroy Mahalajat, but large-scale civilian casualties would only escalate the resistance. Most educated Afghans opposed to the Russians have left Afghanistan. It is the peasants who remain to fight the war.
This film was shot secretly in Kandahar, at times one city block away from Soviet and Afghan army posts. This is the story of jihad, as seen through the eyes of Haji Abdul Latif, the Lion of Kandahar, and his Mujahideen. My name is Razi Haji Abdul Latif. I am 76 years old. For seven years, I have been fighting jihad in Kandahar city. I have 4,500 mujahideen under my command. We fight in the fields, streets and bazaars. In Kandahar, we have no mountains to hide in. Kandahar is the most important province in Afghanistan, so the Russians have concentrated their force here. Though we must fight in the open, we are not afraid. My mujahideen stand fast and fiercely resist the infidels. Haji Latif is one of the most important commanders of National Islamic Front of Afghanistan and also all the Mujahid's commanders which are for fighting the Soviets today. He belonged to a society which they call them barefooters and they have almost the same values like uh, you had it in 18th century, the knights uh, or chevaliers in Europe. I mean, they are always uh, fighting for the truth and justice and also defending against evil. <laughs> right now, the whole society, which he used to be the chief of it, is involved in this holy war. <laughs> Barbara Kamal and the Russians have offered 150,000 rupees for my capture, dead or alive. But they will never succeed because God, the Prophet and the Holy Quran are on my side. God is my friend and will banish Kamal in shame from our land. Thousands of men have been martyred, but we have paid the infidels back. My Mujahideen have killed Russians and the communist Khalkis and Peshamis by the thousands. No place in Afghanistan has given as many martyrs as Kandahar. The Russians are dropping bombs on our land. They are murdering our children, violating our women and the Holy Quran. We have therefore proclaimed a jihad against our enemies and have vowed to fight until our last breath. In Dawud Khan's time, everything was plentiful in Kandahar. Every Muslim, poor and rich, was happy. When the communists came, our properties were destroyed. The Soviet infidels killed my mother and my sister. Since the Russians invaded, many people have left the city, but the people who remain are on the side of the Mujahideen. All of the people in Kandahar, even the children, support jihad. We have spies everywhere. The people tell us what the infidels are up to. The communists live among the people, so there are no secrets from us. The infidels know they are never safe. Here in Kandahar, we fight and live together. We pass the communists in the streets and bazaars. Because of the leadership of my father, Razi Haji Abdul Latif, the Mujahideen can move freely throughout all of Kandahar. Many times the Russians have tried to kill him, but even with all their tanks and helicopters, the Russians cannot stop us. Each week they shell Malhalajat, each week we rocket the airport. Who gave you permission to eat? You did, therefore it's lawful. In Kandahar, war is often a casual affair, an accepted way of life. The weekly rocket attack on Kandahar airport results in severe Soviet casualties, but is treated as a mundane chore.